Welcome back everybody to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, we'll be talking about a significant storm system bringing significant severe weather concerns from the Midwest into the Mid-Atlantic as we go over the next several days, as well as your full tropical weather update in today's video. Before we get into today's video, however, make sure you are subscribed to the channel here so you get daily weather updates across North America, including Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropical topics on this channel and be sure to press the thumbs up button to help get this weather information passed along to as many people as possible. I do truly appreciate that. So let's get into the forecast here looking at the current weather alerts across the country here and yes we are still looking at heat headlines across portions of the southern plains and the lower Mississippi Valley in the orange those are heat advisories but in the purple here those are excessive heat warnings and that stretches here across south southeastern portions of Kansas southwestern Missouri and southward through portions of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and even Mississippi as well. And we still have red flag warnings back here into central Texas where the soil moisture is starting to dry up here. So we have to concern ourselves with fire weather across this region as we go over the next couple of days. And looking here at the generalized weather pattern through the day today, that ridge of high pressure, you guessed it, remains across the southern plains here as of today. Today, bringing the stifling heat wave across Texas and much of the southern United States, but the northeastern periphery of that here moving through the Missouri Valley into the Tennessee Valley. So it'll still be hot in these regions, but not nearly as hot as the areas down here in the maroon red colors across the southern plains. As we go into this weekend, and especially on Sunday, August 6th, you're going to notice a little bit of a divot here in the weather pattern to the north. That is an upper level trough that is going to be our next storm system and that's going to actually put a significant hole in the northeastern periphery of the ridge and actually it's going to start to build back west across the Four Corners region and into Southern California later on this weekend so the extreme heat will start to migrate or expand a little bit further off to the west. So high temperatures this afternoon, yep you guessed it again we're back to the triple digits across the Southern Plains, 104 all the way across portions of Tulsa Oklahoma City, 108 there in Wichita Falls, and yes, 106 in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex this afternoon. Much of the same as we go into tomorrow, and folks, look at that. 110 degrees is forecast for Wichita Falls, Texas on your Saturday afternoon, but you notice where the cooler temperatures are, not too far to the north and east. A couple hour drive from Little Rock up here towards St. Louis. We're into the upper 80s, and we're into around the 90 degree mark up here in Kansas City, but it's not nearly as hot as it is down across the Southern Plains. And that's because we're going to start to see some stronger thunderstorms moving across those areas. And then that cold front dips a little bit further to the south on Sunday. And look at that refreshing air up here. The Dakotas, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, parts of northern Missouri here. We're going to start to see upper 70s and low 80s for high temperatures for your Sunday afternoon. But that cold front, unfortunately, doesn't quite really make it to North Texas. So we're still into the low to mid 100s here with 105 to 110 all told across the Lone Star State. And then back west, we're up to 112 in Phoenix, 111 there in the San Diego region. So it's going to be pretty hot as we go through the weekend across the southern and southwestern United States. Now we talk about the storm activity here because this is going to be a big problem moving forward through this weekend into early next week. So on Friday here to today, we have a slight risk in a couple of zones we're watching across the central plains here from central and western Nebraska down into northwest Kansas and into northeastern Colorado and then down across the Gulf Coast. We're also watching areas into the northeast as well and kind of zooming this in to show you what cities are involved in the threat zone for today. North Platte, Nebraska down to Goodland, Kansas here. Those areas will be watching for some severe weather. 
And then around the Kansas City area towards Springfield, Missouri, we could be talking about some scattered severe weather there as well. And then a higher coverage of at least scattered severe weather from Concord all the way back through Albany and maybe down toward the Philadelphia region as we go through the afternoon and evening across portions of the Northeast as well. But the big player will be this weekend. This is on Saturday, August 5th. This is tomorrow, and a low-pressure system is going to be organizing across the southern Dakotas region, across South Dakota, getting into southwestern Minnesota. And look how that'll start to rapidly deepen as it per, uh, presses further off to the east, across northern Iowa into southeastern Minnesota as a 1,003 millibar low. This is on Sunday, August 6th. And then by the time we get into early next week to start the new work week, here on Monday, August 7th, this is going to deepen across the Upper Great Lakes region to a sub-1,000 millibar low. This is down to 997 millibars, so this is pretty anomalously strong for this time of year, and that's what those dark blue sh uh, shaded colors mean, is that this is actually pretty uncommon, or if not rare, for this time of year for the low-pressure system to get this strong. So, with a strengthening low pressure system this time of year, you know you could be talking about severe weather. So here we go again on Saturday. These are the areas at risk. I'm not going to go through all the cities, but generally eastern portions of Nebraska, western Iowa there, southeastern South Dakota, getting in through much of Kansas and western Missouri. Those will be the areas to highlight here from Omaha to Kansas City and then back west toward the Dodge City region. Watch out for some very large hail, damaging winds, and who knows, possibly even a couple of tornadoes as well and let's time this out a little bit here saturday afternoon we're watching we're waiting for thunderstorms across the central plains and here we go we got clusters of showers and storms a couple mcs's loosely organized across portions of the midwest down here toward kansas and maybe northwestern oklahoma here as we go into saturday night but you notice the rainfall really doesn't touch texas too much and if it does it's the far northern reaches of the panhandle and that's about it as we go into Saturday night. So we'll be watching out for large hail, damaging winds and tornadoes along the way as we go into Saturday night here across those areas. Then the cold front shifts further east. The low pressure system starts to crank up on Sunday and we have more severe weather, a slight risk, a level two out of five for the Chicagoland area, Indianapolis, Grand Rapids, Michigan, all the way down to Paducah, Kentucky, the St. Louis region, Louisville, Cincinnati. Those will be the areas at risk as we go through Sunday as it presses off to the east. And Sunday's a little bit more concerning. I would not be surprised if this gets upgraded in later outlooks to an enhanced risk, which would be a level three out of five, because the low level jet stream with a strengthening low actually will be strengthening itself. So as we go into Sunday afternoon and evening, this low level jet's going to start to crank up on the backside of this low and actually enhance the potential for tornadoes, especially there in eastern Illinois into west central Indiana. That's the target area for where we could have the most rotation in the atmosphere going through Saturday. Saturday or Sunday afternoon and evening. And you can see that's where we're going to have a line, probably a broken line at first of supercells. Those would be most likely to produce tornadoes, very large hail and damaging winds in excess of 60 to 70 miles per hour. And then a solid line of storms will start to sweep through Indiana, southwestern portions of lower Michigan into western Ohio as we go through Sunday night. So this will be a time frame to watch out for. And then we're not done yet as we go further east on Monday on August 7th, more severe weather weather a slight risk is introduced here on the day four outlook from the storm prediction center across the buffalo new york area cleveland columbus down here into portions of charleston west virginia baltimore washington dc those areas will be watching out for some severe weather on monday and it all shifts further east here we go again we got the cold front shifting into the mid-atlantic and new england and that low level jet is there so we have still a strengthening low pressure system so the low level jet is going to be strengthening continuously through the day on Monday and scattered supercells along the way right along and ahead of that cold front will be possible. So tornado genesis could occur as we go into Monday as well. But overall, the total rainfall accumulation now through Wednesday, this takes us through the middle of next week and you can see exactly where the heavy rainfall will be falling here 
Much of the northern United States and the eastern two-thirds of the country will get in on the action here. A little bit of a hole in the precipitation here from central Virginia down into the western Carolinas. Maybe not getting as much rainfall there, but a lot of other areas seeing some very heavy rainfall. But you notice where we have the haves and we have the have-nots. So down here into Texas, southern Louisiana, much of the Four Corners region, Nevada, California, and parts of the coastline there, the Pacific North. Northwest into Washington State and Oregon, we're just not seeing a lot of rainfall, and that's due to the influence of that high pressure ridge across those regions with the extreme heat out there. And yeah, we're going to be really drying out through the next few days. And going through the long range period here, this takes us into the middle of August. This is August 11th through the 17th. We're generally going to continue to see stronger shortwave troughs moving across the northern United States. That's going to bring down our temperatures to at least slightly below normal territory. But the heat will start to build west like we mentioned earlier on in the video, but also build northwest as well. So the Pacific Northwest will get in on the above normal temperatures during that August 11th through the 17th time frame. And it will continue across the southern United States as well. And you can see where the active weather will be. So the haves and have nots again. So underneath the influence of that ridge, near normal to below normal precipitation, especially down here into southern Utah and Arizona. In western New Mexico, we're just not seeing a lot of rain. But over the top here, more shortwave troughs, more storm systems, and we could have more severe weather as well. So above normal precipitation will be favored along and east of the Rockies here for the eastern two-thirds of the country especially if you live in the mid-Atlantic or the northeast toward the middle of August. And looking at this as well a little bit further, the, the reason why we are seeing all of this dry weather is because of the influence of the high pressure across this region. And this is going to be continuing to be monitored for a rapid drought development over the next few days and the next couple of weeks with the Climate Prediction Center forecasting drought development being likely. And anywhere you see the yellow here for much of Texas Hill Country, southern Louisiana, New Mexico, and eastern Arizona, and even parts of the Pacific Northwest as well. And some of this could bleed down into northern California as we go through the month of August here. So that is concerning in itself. But you can see where the rainfall will be, and that's where the drought will start to improve across the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, as we go through the next several weeks. And looking at the soil moisture out there, yes, it's still dry up here to the upper Midwest, but that's the area where we're seeing the rainfall and storm activity. So this is going to improve, but down here where we're already drying out the soils in Texas, Louisiana, New Mexico, and eastern Arizona, it's going to get even drier as we go forward. Even parts of Washington State and Oregon will be getting drier as well. So that is something to concern ourselves with. And looking at the soil moisture change over the last couple of days, you can see where the complexes have been through the mid-Missouri Valley, and we haven't seen them further south. So it's going to continue to dry out across these areas. Turning to the tropical weather update here, we're watching a busy eastern Pacific Ocean with Hurricane Dora spinning across the open waters here. This is a pretty formidable storm across the eastern Pacific Ocean here as of this morning into the afternoon hours. And this is going to continue to maintain major hurricane status through your Saturday morning time frame, most likely. This is sustained at 130 miles per hour. But it is a quicker movement to the west at 18 miles per hour, and it's going to maintain at least Category 1 strength or stronger all the way through as it passes south of Hawaii through early next week. So this is something to watch out for if you live in Hawaii. So let's take you through the European forecast model, generally a very accurate model here, especially in the short term. And you can see a 993 millibar low. There's Hurricane Dora here. This is getting into your Saturday on August 5th. By the time we get into early next week on Monday, August 7th. This is south and east of the Hawaiian Islands here. We have a lot of shear up here protecting us across the Hawaiian Islands. And then by the middle of next week on Wednesday, August 9th, you start to see this more to the south of the Hawaiian Islands, still as a hurricane or a very strong tropical storm. And this is definitely going to be causing possibly some wave action. That's about as most indirect of impacts as we're going to see from this, but something we're going to continue to watch. But this is, yes, going to move south of Hawaii. So no 
major impacts to Hawaii besides the wave action out there, and that's about it. Turning back, though, towards North America, we have a 90% chance of development of a new system here near the coast of Mexico and toward the Baja of California here, and you can see that new tropical wave right there, very close to the coast and getting more organized as this hour continues, and you can see... The warm sea surface temperatures, this is in degrees Celsius here, but anything 26 degrees Celsius or warmer is basically in excess of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So you see a lot of low 30s in here. Yeah, it's very warm. So prime time sea surface temperatures for development and prime shear. The shear values are very low here in this area. So rapid development to a 1,007 millibar low on Saturday, but then as it presses west, we're going to see it strengthen for a time, but then it's going to run out of the warmer waters and remember hurricanes any tropical entity at, at all love the warm water and once they move out of that under 26 degrees celsius you can forget about it and it starts to fall apart and you start to see that as we get into the middle of next week for the north atlantic the caribbean and the gulf no new tropical cyclones expected during the next week so the national hurricane center is not concerned about any of these areas and as they should be because all of the waves coming off of africa have been moving off to the west toward the lesser antilles but the shear is so strong across this region regardless of these sea surface temperatures you can have the warmest temperatures in the water in the world but if you have a lot of strong shear ripping these storms apart it's just not going to happen folks so that's some good news um, there's a silver lining here across portions of the north atlantic the caribbean and the gulf and for the united states so that's some good news moving forward and we'll continue to watch that because yeah look at the shear here it's just too strong in the caribbean we have some shear in the southern Gulf, and really the western Atlantic has been sheared out for the last couple of weeks, and that just continues as we go through this upcoming weekend. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want additional weather forecast updates, including this video, go down below the description of the video, and the link is there to Twitter, and follow me there at HWeather420. I do post on that platform fairly frequently throughout the week. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for the, all the support and watching today's weather forecast. I will have more updates moving forward uh, regarding the severe weather threat and the tropics as well as we get more information in here. Otherwise, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below, and I'll get to those later on today, and I hope everybody has a great rest of their weekend out there.